In life, we often focus on the big milestones, and it's easy to feel like you're not moving fast enough. But today, I want to take a step back and celebrate a small win. Recently, the channel just hit under 2,000 subscribers, and while that might not seem like a huge number compared to some of the other channels on YouTube, it means a lot to me. Every subscriber represents someone who took out the time to watch, support and maybe even enjoy the content I put out. So as we approach the 2000 mark, I wanted to build something that helps remind me of the progress, something that keeps me motivated and reminds me that every small step counts. So in this video, I'm going to share how I made my very own YouTube subscriber counter. It makes for a great studio prop and most importantly, it really helps motivate you if you're finding that you're lacking that creative energy. We're going to discuss the modelling, the electronics and how to put it all together and the part that I'm most excited for is introducing the latest addition to my workshop. Let's get straight into it. So the first step was to find the right microcontroller for this job. The main things that I needed in the microcontroller was for it to be small, so I did a small form factor and most importantly it had to have Wi-Fi so that it can contact the API. And the perfect choice for this was the Wemos D1 Mini. It's small, has Wi-Fi and is really easy to program so this is the perfect use case for it. And then the next step was choosing a display to show the counter on. I wanted something simple and functional, I really like minimalist design. This 8x32 LED matrix has enough real estate to show the information clearly and it's small enough for me to keep the form factor as small as possible and then I can put it somewhere in my space without it getting in the way. And also it's only got 5 pins so that makes the electronic side and the wiring side of things a little bit easier. With the electronics in hand, the first thing that I did was try a dry run before moving on to planning all the hardware. I started by wiring up the Wemos and the LED display onto a breadboard using jumper cables. And then it was time to upload the sketch onto the Wemos. I'll leave a link down below to the sketch that I used and also guides on how you can obtain your channel ID and your API which is what you'll need to get this sketch to work. So far so good guys. So now that we had the electronics and the software working, it was time to design and print the housing to put all this together in. So over in Fusion 360, I started by making really rough mock-ups of the Wemos microcontroller and the LED matrix. That just makes it a little bit easier to arrange them in 3D space and just visualise how you want them to fit together into the casing. So in order to do this, I used my calipers to get some really accurate measurements of the overall features. The key here is not to get bogged down in measuring the really fine details because on a practical level they won't actually make a difference. You just want the overall architecture of the components. So for example the overall shape of the LED display. And with regards to the Wemos you want to know where the USB-C connector goes as well, that's really important. Once I had modelled the components, I arranged them in the rough orientation and position I want them to be in in real life. And then I modelled a front case to go over around the front parts of the components. This obviously had a cutout for the display to come through. I then made a back cover and the plan is to have this all held together using M3 nuts and bolts. And finally I created a little cutout so that I could get a USB-C cable into the Wemos microcontroller. And once I was happy with the way the models were looking, I took them over into Prusa Slicer to get them ready for printing. I used black PETG for this project mainly because I wanted a nice textured finish that you can only really get from that textured build plate. The electronics in this project were fairly straightforward. It was just a case of soldering five wires onto the Wemos, which in turn connected to the five pins on the LED matrix display.
I used a little bit of hot glue to fix the LCD display into position. And I used these 3M double sticky foam pads to fix the Wemos in position, just to give it some resistance to when I'm putting the USB-C cable in. So by this point guys, I was really happy with the way this project was turning out, but I wanted to take it one step further and for that it was time to use the newest addition to my workshop. This is a CNC machine from Genmitsu and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. It's a hobbyist level machine so it does come with its limitations but for small projects and for simple materials it works great. In this project we're going to be using it to create an acrylic cutout that will sit over the front face of the subscriber counter. We're going to use clear acrylic and it's going to give the project a really nice professional polished look. To start off with I cut the acrylic sheet down to the approximate size that I would need it to be. I use this spare piece of MDF to fix the acrylic onto. The purpose of the MDF is so that once the CNC bit comes through the acrylic, rather than damaging the actual machine it's got some spare MDF to cut into which I can always replace if needs be. And I also used some double sticky tape to fix the acrylic onto the MDF so that once it's been cut it doesn't move because of the pressure of the CNC bit. I used the supplied clamp to fix the MDF and the acrylic onto the bed. To be honest this is one of the features that I'd like to try and improve on in some way. It's a little bit fiddly but it gets the job done. The last thing was to put the right CNC bit in and then we were off and away. I used a decorator's knife to carefully pry off the acrylic sheet from the underlying double sticky tape and the NDF. To get the acrylic looking nice and tidy, first I obviously removed the clear plastic film it came with, and gave it a good clean, filed the edges and then at the end gave it a little bit of heat treatment just to give it that nice soft outer edge. With everything ready, all that was left to do is put it all together. The assembly process was really straightforward. It was just a case of using some M3 nuts inserted into the back and M3 times 30 bolts all the way through. And this is the final outcome guys. I was super stoked with the way this turned out. The black PETG and the acrylic make such a nice combination and the LED matrix display gives it that nice retro look. 
I tested it under different lighting conditions to make sure the display was always visible. All that was left to do was to give our new subscriber counter a nice new home. Once we had put everything together, put it in its new home and it was all working as planned, there was just one question, how much did this cost? So let's start off with the acrylic sheets. I bought a pack of six for just under £17. I used one sheet so that comes up to about £2.83 in material cost there. The LED display we used cost just under £11. The Wemos microcontroller I used came in a pack of five, just under £13, and if you divide that up, that cost £2.60. And in terms of filament cost, going by the numbers visible on Prusa Slicer, the total cost of filament was just under £2 at £1.93. So putting all that together and rounding it up, this project cost about £20, which isn't bad. And that's a wrap for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I just want to take this chance to thank each and every one of you who subscribed, onwards and upwards. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment on this video. I'll leave links to similar projects that I've done and I'll see you all next time.